Um, this reaction was again reversible because we, the way to reverse this is just to kick the nitrogen off, and nitrogens can be leading groups. So I really maybe it would have been best <coughs> to use equilibrium arrows all along the way. So this can be turned back into a aldehyde or a ketone. What would we have to add to this compound to turn it back into a ketone? H3O plus. Yeah, again, H3O plus is the great way to reveal hidden carbonyl. So again, we can think of this as a hidden carbonyl. And again, you should probably go through the mechanism for that. Maybe we won't go through that together. That's in the right-hand column on page three of the handout. If you read from the bottom up, that shows the mechanism for this reverse reaction here. And again, I think you only need to know that for the acid-catalyzed case. So we've seen, what do you do when you have an ammonia and an aldehyde or a ketone? Category three. Or a primary amine, category three. Or a secondary amine, category two. The last case would be a tertiary amine. But they really don't give us an interesting product because they can't, they can't really attack even once because they would be left with a positive charge. So for the most part, this is, this is not going to not be something we're looking into. We don't get any interesting products here. Um, because the nitrogen doesn't even want to attack once because it couldn't deprotonate even once. So tertiary amines we're not really going to have to worry about. Just ammonia, primary, and secondary. Would be, we could get category one and two with these, right? With like primary amine? With a primary amine? Let's see, primary amine would definitely give us category three. So a secondary amine? Secondary amine would definitely give us category two. That's the example we just went through, right? Right. So no amines would give us... Category one or two? That's right. Okay. Amines never give you category one or category two. Um, of course, we kind of pass through this category one picture. Category one is what it looks like after just the first nucleophilic attack, but we're not going to stay there. Um, so yeah, um, so different types of nucleophiles give you different types of categories. For example, we've seen that grit yards and hydrides give us category one. We've seen that alcohols give us category two. We've seen that ammonia and primary amines give us category three, and now we've seen that secondary amines give us category four. Tertiary amines don't really give us an interesting nucleophilic attack because they don't have any protons to lose. And all those different types of um, things are covered in the handout. If you look at each category, it says what's the type of nucleophile that will give you each of the categories. For example, for category four, you can see there's only one type of nucleophile that would give us category four, which is a secondary amine. Uh, and there's still one more thing we have to say here. Yeah, but they don't protonate first. Look. Yeah, well, this is a good example of where they've actually left out the catalyst. So. You put it here, and then even in the mechanism, you do left out too. Yeah, they, they just left out um, the catalyst here. Um, so um, I guess that would be acceptable. I think usually these are supposed to be um, acid or base catalyzed. So, um, but for some reason, oftentimes when, so oftentimes with nitrogen nucleophiles, they don't actually show the involvement of the catalyst. Um, but usually it is said that technically there is supposed to be a catalyst here. Why? All right, one more point about this mechanism. When the water left, there was really two ways to show this. Instead of showing the water leaving like this. Oh, we can push it off. That's right. Wouldn't that just be repetitive because we're gonna have to you could have shown... But that would give you a double bond. That's right. And it would have a plus charge, and we'd have to move the bond 10. And do resonance. Oh, resonance. Mm -hmm. That would give us this. And then... Not resonance. Hmm. But it is a resonance structure. that we have a kind of... Then you could do this. And now just get us back to the product we got over here. Sometimes you might see instructors write the mechanism this way. I leave this out because it seems like a needless complication because all we're doing is forming a pi bond and then in the very next step taking away the pi bond. It doesn't, I don't think it gives us any, um, it doesn't give us all that much more insight and just complicates the mechanism. But it's important to see that you might see it written this way sometimes in class or lecture. We talked about this in the previous session. Um, why are these, these mechanisms really the same? They really only differ by resonance because they really only differ in the placement of these pi electrons inside this molecule. Remember that if two mechanisms only differ in, uh, with regards to the placement of pi electrons inside a single molecule, they're really the same thing because that's just a resonance difference. And we're going to see that over and over now for the rest of the course because we're going to have lots of pi electrons moving inside of molecules. So just because your mechanism doesn't look exactly the same as the answer key doesn't mean it's wrong if they only differ by resonance. So we can either show the water leaving by itself, or we can show the nitrogen kicking it off with the lone pair. 
But if you show the nitrogen kicking it off, you're just going to have to um, get rid of that pi bond in the very next step over here. So I think it's simpler to do it the way we did up here. However, you should keep in mind, what's one of the things that's stabilizing this carbocation? Um, the alkyl groups. So yeah. Besides the alkyl groups, what's the other thing that's stabilizing the carbocation? Resonance. Resonance. We can draw a resonance form where these lone pairs are over here. So you should keep in mind that's something that's stabilizing the carbocation. That's why instructors sometimes like to write it this way, to show how the carbocation is stabilized by resonance. But I think it's better just to say that to yourself in the back of your head rather than actually writing it on a paper every time. But uh, there are more than one legal way to write these mechanisms, and we have to watch out for that. All right, so now I think we've gone, whoops, I think we've gone through uh, the reactions for the nitrogen nucleophiles. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? We can take a look at the example. Mm -hmm.